We're going to be in 1 Samuel chapter 14. And I want to look at Jonathan and his armor bearer. I believe one is, this is one of the most underrated stories in the Bible. And this is two Bible warriors, Jonathan and his armor bearer. Starting in 1 Samuel 13, 22. It says, So it came to pass on the day of battle that there was neither sword nor spear found in the hand of any of the people that were with Saul and Jonathan, but with Saul and with Jonathan his son was there found. A good Bible warrior makes use of his sword. It was just Jonathan and Saul that had a sword. The rest of Israel didn't have one. Saul pictures a lazy pastor who has no appetite for the word and won't give the sword of the Lord, of the word of God, to his people. Hebrews 4.12 says, For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. So your word is likened to a sword. Saul won't give out the sword, you see. Jonathan pictures a man who has the sword who has the King James Bible and isn't afraid to use it. He's going to put it to good use. A good Bible warrior doesn't waste what he has. With great power, you got your King James Bible, you got great power. With that comes great responsibility. You got a responsibility to give out the word, to read the word, study the word, make use of the sword that you have. Not everybody had a sword, but Saul and Jonathan both had a sword. One made use of it, the other one didn't do much with it. So a good Bible warrior is going to, first and foremost, make use of the sword. Jonathan didn't just want to sit back with the sword and do nothing with it. He wanted to get in the fight. So he doesn't waste his days. A good Bible warrior doesn't waste his days. It says in 1 Samuel 14, 1, Now it came to pass upon a day. Right off you see something that reminds you of the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because this story we're going to read about, it says it came to pass upon a day. Do you know when the Lord will come back to fight for Israel? In that day. Over and over again, you'll see that phrase, in that day, the day of the Lord. In Isaiah 31, 5, it says, as birds flying, so will the Lord of hosts defend Jerusalem, defending also he will deliver it, and passing over it, he will preserve it. Turn ye unto him from, the, from whom the children of Israel have deeply revolted, for in that day. Every man shall cast away his idols of silver and his idols of gold, which your own hands have made unto you for a sin. So think about that. Think about Jonathan now. It came to pass upon a day. Jonathan didn't want to waste any more days like his father was doing. He wanted to redeem the time. The Lord Jesus Christ, he's coming back in that day to fight for Israel. Jonathan, it came to pass on a day he fought for Israel. Jonathan wanted to redeem the time. Ephesians 5.15, he said, it says, See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. It came to pass upon a day. A Bible warrior, he wants to make use of his sword. He doesn't want to waste the days that God has given him. He wants to put that sword to use. So he doesn't shy away from the fight. First Samuel 14, 1 Samuel 14.1 Now it came to pass upon a day that Jonathan, the son of Saul, said unto the young man that bears armor, Come, and let us go over to the Philistine's garrison that is on the other side. So he says, Come. That's what he says to his armor bearer. And that's one of the Lord's favorite words. He told Noah to come into the ark. He says in Isaiah 1, Come now and let us reason together. You see, the Lord's about making a move. The Lord doesn't want to sit in the stands. He wants to go into the fight. He wants 
to run in and earnestly contend for the faith. A Bible warrior doesn't shy away from the fight. There's no need to be scared. He's got the sword. He knows he's one of the only ones with the sword, so he's bold in the truth. He doesn't want anyone to try to stop him. You see, in 1 Samuel 14, 1, it says, It came to pass upon a day that Jonathan the son of Saul said unto the young man that bears armor, Come, let us go over to the Philistines' garrison that is on the other side. But he told not his father. Sometimes it's best not to tell anyone who will try to talk you out of the Lord's battles. Do what you have to do. Do what the Lord would have you do. Jonathan didn't want his father holding him back from going in and fighting the battle. He doesn't need an army of support. In 1 Samuel 14, 2, it says, And Saul tarried in the uttermost part of Gibeah under a pomegranate tree, which is in Migron. And the people that were with him were about 600 men. So Saul is tarrying. Jonathan's the opposite. He's more like the Lord who won't tarry. When it's time for the great battle, he's not going to tarry. It says in Hebrews 10.37, For yet a little while, he that shall come will come and will not tarry. The Lord's not going to tarry. Jonathan, he's done sitting back. He doesn't want to be in the uttermost part of Gibeah under a pomegranate tree. That's what Saul's doing, hanging back in the uttermost part. He's as far away as he can possibly get from the battle. Saul is being a part of the army of Israel in name only. The true warrior, Jonathan, is about to back up his title with the works of God. He's going to make use of his sword. He doesn't need any support from Saul and his 600 men. It's just going to be him and his armor bearer. Saul has those 600 men. But hundreds of men can't help you when you're just full of fear and you're a coward. A Bible warrior doesn't need any recognition. In 1 Samuel 14, 3, it says, Ahiah, the son of Ahitab, Ichabod's brother, the son of Phinehas, the son of Eli, the Lord's priest in Shiloh, wearing an ephod. And the people knew not that Jonathan was gone. Jonathan hadn't published among the men the great work that he was about to perform. He doesn't need their recognition. Saul had the priest with him, but Jonathan probably knew he wouldn't have the support of Ahiah, the backslid priest who was most likely hooked up with Saul just for gain. Because a lot of preachers will never back someone who's really wanting to do something for the Lord like Jonathan. They back the one who will further their popularity and their ministry. So he hung out with the king Saul. But Jonathan, he doesn't need any recognition. He doesn't need these big names. He doesn't need his father Saul. He doesn't need Ahiah. And Jonathan, he doesn't doubt that the Lord has his back. It says in uh, 1 Samuel 14, 4, And between the passages by which Jonathan sought to go over into the Philistines' garrison, there was a sharp rock on the one side and a sharp rock on the other side. And the name of the one was Bozaz, and the name of the other, Sina. Now, Sina means thorn bush. Thorns picture the curse that came on man through the sin of Adam. Bozaz means shining. This could picture the warrior's obstacles that he's going to face along the way. He's going to have to fight the curse, the thorns of this world because of sin. At the same time, there is a shining. There's going to be the allure, the lure of the world trying to pull you in so that it can wrap around you like a giant thorny plant. And Second Peter 2, 18 and 19, it says, For when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they allure through the lust of the flesh, through much wantonness. Those that were clean escape from them who live in air. Well, they promised them liberty. They themselves are the servants of corruption, for of whom a man is overcome, of the same as he brought in bondage. Those are sharp rocks along the way. They allure through the lusts of the flesh. The devil is the god of this world. He transforms himself into an angel of light. 
He's going to shine a little bit to allure you. The world is going to shine a little bit. It's going to allure you, trying to get you off the path. 1 Samuel 14, 5, the forefront of the one was situate northward over against Michmash, and the other southward over against Gibeah. And Jonathan said to the young man that bears armor, Come, and let us go over into the garrison of these uncircumcised. It may be that the Lord will work for us, for there is no restraint to the Lord to save by many or by few. Jonathan knows who he's dealing with. He's dealing with these uncircumcised Philistines. These are people who are not in a covenant with God. He said, it may be that the Lord would work for him. He knows that he's dealing with the uncircumcised who aren't a part of a covenant with God. And he himself is of Israel. He is in a covenant with God. You, you go through this world and you think the people in this world sometimes really have something over you. They ain't got nothing over you. You are a child of the king, the one that made the universe. They don't have nothing over you. They have no advantage over you. You have Christ in you, the hope of glory. And no matter what situation you go through, it may be that the Lord will work for you. You know, Jonathan knows that God has his plans, and sometimes his plan doesn't match his. But whether he's going to work for him or not, Jonathan's going to serve him. Whether the Almighty's going to work for him or not, Jonathan knows that all things are going to work out. And I'm reminded of the three Hebrew boys who were not willing to bow down to Nebuchadnezzar's image. And whether the Lord delivered them or not, they were still going to serve him. I like what they say in Daniel 3, 17 and 18. It says, If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. Now look what they say. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. They believe that the Lord would deliver them, but if not, they still ain't going to serve Nebuchadnezzar and bow down to the image. You see, they knew that maybe it wasn't God's will to deliver them. Jonathan knows maybe it's not God's will to fight for him, but he did say, maybe the Lord will fight, but if not, either way, he's still going to serve him. No matter the trials you face, have the boldness and the confidence that God's going to fight the battle for you. But if not, just keep serving God anyhow. A true Bible warrior doesn't doubt the Lord has his back. A true Bible warrior has the heart of a lion. 1 Samuel 14, 7, his armor bearer said unto him, Do all that is in thine heart. Turn thee, behold, I am with thee according to thy heart. Jonathan can picture the Lord Jesus Christ, and me and you can picture the armor bearer. We need to find out God's heart towards a thing and do accordingly. You can follow Jesus Christ into any fight. The armor bearer could follow Jonathan into any fight. Jonathan was bold as a lion. Proverbs 28, 1. The wicked flee when no man pursueth, but the righteous are bold as a lion. Jesus Christ will be bold as a lion at the second coming. He is the line of the tribe of Judah, and he will have tens of thousands of his saints bearing his armor at the second coming. You're gonna have you gotta have the heart of a lion. You gotta be bold as a lion. That is confident and bold in the Lord. First Samuel fourteen eight then said Jonathan, Behold, we will pass over unto these men, and we will discover ourselves unto them, meaning they will reveal themselves to the enemy face to face, man to man. And this is the way we should be with the gospel. We should discover ourselves to the lost world unashamed. Romans 1, 16, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation everyone that believeth, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. It says in 1 Samuel 14, 9, If they say thus unto us, Tarry until we come to you, then we will stand still in our place and will not go up unto them. 
You see, God told Moses to tell the children of Israel to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. But here, the Lord would have Jonathan go up. You see, there's a time for you to get in the fight and to start fighting. But even when you're doing the fighting, it's the Lord really doing the fighting still. He's the one making everything go through, making everything work out. First Samuel fourteen ten it says, But if they say thus, come up unto us, then we will go up. For the Lord hath delivered them into our hand, and this shall be a sign unto us. Jonathan is not only outnumbered, but also at a disadvantage positionally, because the Philistines have a higher position. It's a lot easier to defeat someone at a lower level when they're at a lower level than you than when they're at a higher level than you. Let this be a reminder that if your enemy has all the advantages that you can see, you have the only real advantage in the fight, someone they cannot see, and that's God Almighty. The Jews require a sign. That's how they operated. Today we operate by faith in the Word of God in the King James Bible. Jonathan and Israel, they were operating by signs. And they said if the Philistines look down and say, Come up unto us, then we will go up, because that's the sign that the Lord's going to deliver them into our hand. And when a lost person shows an interest in the Word of God, that's like them saying, Come up unto us. And then we can take our spiritual sword and try to win them to the Lord. Sometimes I'll just be reading, sitting around reading my Bible. Somebody will come up to me and start talking to me about the Bible. That's like them saying, the Philistines saying, come up unto us. That's that door of opportunity. That's a sign to me that the Lord has sent this person for me to talk to about the Bible. So, be confident and bold in the Lord. You have a sword. Not many people through history compared to the billions and billions of people that have existed have had what you have so easily accessible to be read without fear. You have a sword. You can be confident and bold in the Lord. You're victorious before the battle is fought. In 1 Samuel 14, 11, it says, And both of them discovered themselves unto the garrison of the Philistines. They jumped right out there and showed themselves to the Philistines. And the Philistines said, Behold, the Hebrews come forth out of the holes where they had hid themselves. You see, they made themselves known to the enemy. They weren't ashamed. They weren't afraid. They didn't want the enemy thinking the saints were a bunch of chickens hiding out. In 1 Samuel 14, 12, And the men of the garrison answered Jonathan and his armor bearer and said, Come up to us. And we will show you a thing. And Jonathan said to his armor bearer, Come up after me, for the Lord hath delivered them into the hand of Israel. The Philistines said, Come up to us. You see, the lost world always believes they're on a higher level than a Bible believer. They said, We will show you. We will show you a thing. That's like them saying, the world saying, We'll show you a thing or two. We got more knowledge than you. They think they're so much smarter, so much wiser. They're so much smarter with the wisdom of the world. But we have the mind of Christ. We got God's mind on paper. We got the Lord's mind on our side. Victory has already been promised to me. I'm victorious before I even fight the battle. In 1 Corinthians 15, 57, it says, it says, But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. I'm always made to triumph in Christ. Just as Jonathan knew the battle was in his favor before he ever even entered the fight, we know we've won before our life is even over. In 1 Samuel 14, 13, And Jonathan climbed up upon his hands and upon his feet, and his armor bearer after him. And they fell before Jonathan, and his armor bearer slew after him. He climbed upon his hands and upon his feet. That's a picture of prayer going into the battle. Also picture this, when Jesus Christ triumphed over the enemy, he was pierced in his hands and his feet on the cross. Psalm twenty-two, sixteen: they pierced my hands and my feet. So Jesus Christ was crucified on the cross, they pierced his hand and his feet. 
Then he wants you, his armor bearer, to take up his cross and follow him. Just as the armor bearer does here, he follows right after Jonathan on his hands and on his feet. Walking on all fours like a lion going to the prey. They shall not escape the line of the tribe of Judah and the righteous who are bold as a lion. 1 Samuel 14, 14, and that first slaughter which Jonathan and his armor bearer made was about 20 men within as it were an half acre of land which a yoke of oxen might plow. So you got two verses, however many, at least two verses 20, but like, the, like Jonathan said, there's no restraint to the Lord to save by many or by few. He doesn't need Saul 600 men. He doesn't even need Jonathan and his armor bearer. He could have just snapped his fingers and had the Philistines all blown to a million pieces. It's nothing to, with God to say by many or by few. To say by Saul and his 600 or just Jonathan and his armor bearer. It's a great slaughter by two great warriors. But most of all, it was by the great God. 1 Samuel fourteen fifteen, And there was trembling in the host, in the field, and among all the people, the garrison and the spoilers, they also trembled, and the earth quaked. And so it was a very great trembling, just like the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. At the second coming, when we come back with the Lord in our glorified bodies, it says, The earth shall quake before them. Joel 2, 10, it says, Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble. Joel 2, 1. In 1 Samuel 14, 16, it says, And the watchmen of Saul and Gibeah of Benjamin looked, and behold, the multitude melted away, and they went on beating down one another. You see, if you sit around too long like Saul and his men, then you're going to miss the fight. They done miss the fight. It says the multitude melted away. Just like the second coming, Isaiah 13, 6 through 8. It says, How ye... For the day of the Lord is at hand. There's that phrase again. Remember with Jonathan, 1 Samuel 14, 1, it came to pass upon a day. How ye, for the day of the Lord is at hand, it shall come as a, a destruction from the Almighty. The Lord is a man of war. Therefore shall all hands be faint, and every man's heart shall melt, and they shall be afraid. Pangs and sorrow shall take hold of them. They shall be in pain as a woman that travaileth. They shall be amazed one at another. Their faces shall be as flames. They're going to melt away. Just like the multitude melts away in 1 Samuel 14, 16. Notice the Philistines went on beating down one another. The, the world will fight amongst themselves. But the Lord's army at the second coming won't have any friendly fire going on. Joel 2, 8 says, Neither shall one thrust another just as Jonathan and his armor bearer are in perfect sync. 1 Samuel fourteen seventeen. Then said Saul unto the people that were with him, Number now, and see who is gone from us. And when they had numbered, behold, Jonathan and his armor bearer were not there. These guys were so busy doing absolutely nothing that they couldn't even see that their brothers were out there performing a great work that they could have supported and backed up. A lot of times, maybe you get so caught up in what you're doing, you don't see somebody out there that's doing a great work. Maybe you think you're the only one doing a great work, but you got somebody out there doing an even better work than you're doing, and you're just sitting back not really doing anything. And Saul said unto Ahiah, Bring hither the ark of God. For the ark of God was at that time with the children of Israel. Saul, sitting here going on about nothing, he still thinks the power's in the ark, but the power was in the God of the ark, and he was up there fighting a battle. Just like this world today thinks the power is in flashy stuff, flashy preaching, and they think the power's in looking the part more than actually performing the work. They think the power's in numbers, in big names, but the power's in the word of God. That's what the true warrior lives and dies by. Jonathan made use of the sword that he had. And it came to pass while Saul talked unto the priest that the noise 
that was in the host of the Philistines went on and increased, and, and Saul said unto the priest, Withdraw thine hand. And Saul went, or and Saul and all the people that were with him assembled themselves, and they came to the battle. And behold, every man's sword was against his fellow, and there was a great, very great discomfiture. The Philistines' swords were turned on each other. It was a great discomfiture. I imagine being in a church where everyone has a different version of their false Bible. Their swords will eventually go against each other, and there's a great discomfiture. A state of confusion. Every man's sword against his fellow. Unlike Job chapter 2, we're all in perfect sync. We all got the same sword. The Word of God, Hebrews 4.12. 1 Samuel 14, 1. Moreover, the Hebrews that were with the Philistines before that time, which went up with them into the camp from the country round about, even they also turned to be with the Israelites that were with Saul and Jonathan. These Hebrews, had, that's talking about here in this verse, moreover, the Hebrews that were with the Philistines at, before that time. See, these Hebrews had become something like slaves to the Philistines, but the heroics and bravery of Jonathan caused the Hebrews to come back with Israel. When you trust in the Lord and he brings a great victory through you, you can cause many Christians to come back to the Lord's army. In 1 Samuel 14, 22, Likewise, all the men of Israel which had hid themselves in Mount Ephraim, when they heard that the Philistines fled, even they also followed hard after them in the battle. You see, men can wax bold by seeing your braveness. Just like when they saw Paul in, locked up for the faith. It, Paul said, Philippians 1.14, And many of the brethren in the Lord, waxing confident by my bonds, are much more bold to speak the word without fear. Men can see you being a warrior and get more bold in the faith. First Samuel 14.23, So the Lord saved Israel that day, and the battle passed over unto beth -Avon. Notice it ends with the phrase, the Lord saved Israel that day, just like He will save, just like He will save it. The Lord will save Israel in that day at the second coming. The Lord Jesus Christ is a man of war, the ultimate warrior, pictured by Jonathan, a great Bible warrior. We can look at these Bible warriors and learn from these men, and you know. Pick apart their lives. Try to add the good things of their life to our life. Pick out their flaws and try to not to have those flaws in our life. But what you have here, two Bible warriors, Jonathan and his armor bearer, going up to fight the Philistines. At a disadvantage, look where they're at. They're having to go up to fight. They're outnumbered. But they're bold as a lion because they've got the Lord on their side. 